Hey guys, welcome to my legal classes. I was conducting series of sessions on Hindu Marriage Act 1955 and in this series this is the fourth session that I am conducting which is on ceremonies for Hindu marriage. The ceremonies for Hindu marriage is covered under section number 7. Now I will help you with the trick how to remember section 7. The section 7 is dealing with Saptapadi which is one of the important ceremony for Hindu marriage. Saptapadi is 7 steps and section 7 are matching that way so that's how you can remember ceremonies for Hindu marriage is falling under which section. Now the previous sessions we have covered section 1, 2, 3 and 5 they are very important sessions as far as Hindu marriage act 1955 is concerned so if you have not watched please watch that video and then continue with this video so that your understanding becomes very clear. Now moving on to the first session uh, the section 7 has two major aspects that I am covering in this slide. There are few other aspects also. But for me, I am not focusing too much on them. But these two are very very important. So focus on this slide and your job is most done. The next slide gives some interesting case laws pertaining to ceremonies for Hindu marriage. And once you are through with them, you are done with section number 7. There are few other aspects also available in, the in this section and I have given them in the uh, three other slides. I just read out them for the benefit of uh, those people who are just listening maybe while traveling and other steps. And for the people who are watching you can just take a screenshot of those slides when I say and uh, uh, you can ignore uh, watching the video on that part. Now the major part of uh, section 7 is coming under uh, 7, 1 and 7, 2. Let me read through and then explain. The 7.1 says a Hindu marriage may be solemnized in accordance with the customary rites and ceremonies of either party thereto. See in Hindu marriage or any of the Hindu laws are concerned, the customary rites are having very important rule. So if there is any practices or rites followed through customary practices that needs to be continued when it comes to Hindu marriage also. So they very clearly say customary rites and ceremonies of either party there too. So that is up to the parties that how they are picking it but those needs to be followed. That's very very important to complete a valid Hindu marriage. Now the second one where such rites and ceremonies include the Saptapadi if the rites is con uh, include Saptapadi that is the taking of seven steps by the bridegroom and the bride jointly before the sacred fire, the marriage becomes complete and binding when the seventh step is taken. Saptapadi is must in some ceremony uh, as per the uh, uh, practice of the family or the community or tribe or whatsoever we have defined in the section number three definitions. So there you need to follow all the seven step procedures and when you take the seventh step the marriage becomes complete. Now there is a state amendment section 7a Pondicherry after section 7 insert the following section namely by each party to the marriage declaring in any language understood by the parties that each takes the other to be his wife or as the case may be her husband or uh, the first one comes almost to the uh, matter of consent that both the parties need to be taken and they should declare that in the language that both are understanding uh, that they are husband and wife then by each party to the marriage garlanding to other or putting a ring upon any finger of the other so there are two options given here one is either by garlanding or maybe putting the ring uh, that is the other practice that they are mentioning and the third one is by the tying of Tali. Tali is Mangal Sutra what we say in Hindi. So uh, when they uh, by, when they tie the thread, uh, holy thread, the marriage becomes valid. Now below I have given images like any other slides of mine. I always give images for to understand and to keep them in your mind. And while writing your exam just to recall that what were the images that you have seen and to improve your quality of answers. Below I have given the major customary practices that are being followed in Hindu religion. Please take a screenshot. I am putting my image up now. Yeah. So the first one is on Saptapadi 7 steps and the second one is Kanyadan where the uh, bride's father gives his daughter to the bridegroom and from there his rights on his daughter 
he gives over to the bridegroom that is kanyadan then the third image is on the garlands part and the fourth one uh, exchanging the ring and the fifth one is tying the holy thread or tali or mangal sutra hope this image helps you to remember and recall while you are writing the answers now let's move to the important case laws as per as section 7 is concerned the first one is ram charan singh versus uh, jaku mahabir uh, here what happens uh, the bridegroom couldn't come couldn't able to come to the marriage hall so what he does is he is sending his sword for the marriage but however the court held that the marriage was void i have given a sword picture here so you can remember the sword picture when it comes to ram charan singh versus jaku mahabir's case the second one is devayani achi versus uh, chidambar chettiar uh, it was a self respect cult uh, they said uh, we don't uh, believe in puro system and other stuff and we are not following any of the ceremonies that uh, dip, uh, done in hindu marriage and instead of uh, doing all those ceremonies what the, this guy does is he marries uh, by exchanging the garland in front of few of his friends uh, but however as the ceremony of saptapadi was already available among them the uh, court said that this marriage is not valid so if saptapadi was followed that needs to be continued only when uh, the saptapadi is completed the marriage becomes valid this is this is held in this case and the third one is a very interesting case dr n a mukherjee and shrimati harbans kaur uh, here remember that this lady harbans kaur was a married woman and her husband was alive when all these instances incidents took place here what does dr n a mukherjee do is he does three different uh, activities in three different times Uh, uh, uh neither uh, not not activities ceremonies the first one was ceremony was performed in a moonlight uh, moonlit night in the open where dr mukherjee after reciting a few sanskrit verses embraces shrimati harbans kaur and exclaimed moon you are my witness i am marrying harbans and she is my wife and i am her husband he uh, says to moon that uh, i am marrying harbans and she is my wife and i am her husband that's the first practice he did and then the second ceremony was performed 8 years later in a kali temple where the parties exchanged garlands in front of the deity and walked seven steps together so that was the second uh, ceremony they did and the third ceremony was performed a day later before guru granth sahib and imitation of ananda karaj the court held that the performances of such mock ceremonies of marriage does not constitute a valid solemnization of marriage so these are the three cases case law that you can refer when you are writing uh, section number 7 now i am reading through the rest of the part i said you can take the screenshot and uh, that suffices the requirement but however for the people who are listening to the uh, audio instead of watching it and just read through 72 reads uh, not withstanding anything uh, 72 a reads not withstanding anything contained in section 7 but subject to the other provisions of this act all marriage to which the section applies solemnized after the commencement of hindu marriage uh, that is madras amendment act 1967 shall be good and valid in law this 72 uh, a came along with the madras amendment act it was not available in the earlier version so 2 a when you say uh, see that a you can understand uh, this was added later then b says not withstanding anything contains in section 7 or any in any text rule or interpretation of hindu law or any customs or usage as part of that law in force immediately before the commencement of hindu marriage that is madras amendment act 1967 or in any other law in force immediately before such commencement or in any judgment decrees or order of any court but subject to sub section 3 all marriages to which this section applies solemnized at any time before such commencement shall be deemed to have been with effect on and from the date of the solemnization of each such marriage respectively good and valid law now let's see what is 3 says please keep taking the screenshot for your benefit nothing contained in this section shall be deemed to a render valid any marriage referred to in clause b of such subsection 2 if before the commencement of hindu marriage madras amendment act 1967 then continued such marriage has been dissolved under any custom or law or the woman who was a party of such marriage has whether during or after the life of the other party there to lawfully married another or render invalid a marriage between 
any two hindus solemnized at any time before such commencement if such marriage was valid at the time at that time or render valid marriage between any two uh, hindu solemnized uh, any two hindu solemnized uh, at any time before such commencement if such marriage was invalid at the time of any ground other than that it was not solemnized in accordance with the customary rites and ceremonies of either party there to provided that nothing contained in this subsection shall render any person liable to any punishment whatsoever by reason of anything done or omitted to be done by him before such commencement the last slide uh, any child of the parties to a marriage referred to in clause of subsection born of such marriage shall be deemed to be their legitimate child provided that in case falling under sub clause 1 or sub clause 2 of sub clause a of sub section 3 such child was begotten before the date of the dis dissolution of the marriage or as the case may be before the date of the second of the marriage referred to the said sub clause uh, white tamil nadu act of uh, 21 of uh, 1920, 1967 section 2 now uh, this is all the extra information if you want to go through you can do it or uh, just limit to the slide number 2 and 3 where i have said what is 7 1 and 2 and then uh, the case laws now if you study those two slides you are good enough uh, to answer this question uh, the rest of the things you can uh, just take a screenshot and read before going to the exams and uh, to increase the value of your uh, answer uh, you can refer this madras amendment case and uh, 2a that is up to you how much you are capable of with that i am uh, concluding this session uh, thanks for watching this video i am coming with uh, more videos on this series the next one will be interesting uh, we are getting into the uh, remedies available under hindu marriage act uh, the conjugal rights restriction of conjugal rights or uh, 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 legal uh, separation or uh, divorce uh, i will come to that in my next session till then uh, thanks for watching please subscribe my channel and Uh, like my videos all the very best for your exams thanks again